Now it makes a square. I'll do it slowly so you can sort of watch this turtle make its uh, broad square. And then um, we get to embellish it a little bit. We'll change the color based on the direction the turtle's heading. And I'll make the pen be a little bit fatter so you can see what's going on in the back of the room. Now you can see it drawing. And now we're going to make a little, get a little bit fancier. And I'm going to take a box. I'm going to put a number in the box. And then we're going to use that number. And it's going to go forward based on the number of the box. And you'll see nothing changes. It's going forward 100 still. But now we're going to take the number that's in the box. And we'll change it in our inner loop here. And I'll just add uh, 1. And it won't look much different when I just go around once. Let me erase and we'll just do it again. But now what I'm going to do is instead of going once, I'm going to go 400 times instead of 4 times. And now I'm going to make one more change. Instead of going 90 degrees, I'm going to go 91 degrees. So with just this little program, already we're starting to get into some, some reaching to some real complexity. So the idea is that we can very quickly introduce the children to some of these programming concepts and, uh, and get them doing some pretty interesting things. Now I want to go back to my uh, presentation if it's actually going to work again. I wonder if I just lost it all together. Something's going very wrong here. Ah, here we go. We're back. I'll go back to uh, where I was. So, I just gave you a little demonstration of turtle art. And turtle art is a programming environment that literally, you know, six, seven, eight year olds can start to use. Not two year olds, but six, seven, eight year olds can start to program in turtle art. This is, an ex this is something done by a child. This is something similar to what I was just showing you. But what we try to do with turtle art, just like we do with music, is we try to give the children a way out into something that's more complex. We don't keep them in the simple world where we give them a mountain to climb. And in this particular case, we've got a couple of different things we can do. One is we can go from this, this visual programming language, which is limited, it's got a very low ceiling, there's only certain things you can do, to a, a text-based, more traditional programming language. So I can export my project from here into a text-based programming environment where I can do anything I want. So it's completely open-ended. So I have a, a pathway, a gateway out into, uh, uh, and then I've got another gateway. And that is that we have this concept in sugar called view source. It's something, it's an idea we stole from the, from the web browser. Every web browser since the original Mosaic browser has a menu item called view source. And with view source, what you do in the browser is you see the source code, the HTML representation of the web page. And from that representation, you can see how to do it yourself. 
And I'll argue that one of the reasons the web as a protocol took off, because there were many competing protocols at the time, the reason why that particular protocol is the one that, that won out with all the others is because of view source. Because it made it open. It made it an open communication protocol that other people could see and use and change. Well, we do the same thing with sugar. Every program in sugar has a view source. So every child can actually look at the source codes. In this case, this is the source code to Turbler, the program we're just running, the program we're running right now. And by using that, the child can make a change. Now, that's a pretty high mountain to climb, and it sounds pretty esoteric. But in fact, it's happening, it's real. And what we've done with sugar, save this image. I'm, I'm going to skip a slide ahead. Save that picture in your head, though. This is a physics program in sugar. It's a simulation environment. And it's actually, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. You can have all these different objects. There are motors, there's gravity, there's motion. You can do a lot of neat stuff. This is a, a platform that a, a child built that um, sort of simulates earthquakes. And so then the challenge is to build a structure on top of a platform that's earth, earthquake proof. Things like that. There's a lot of neat stuff that you can do with a physics program. Within 24 hours of this program first going online and being available to download, within 24 hours, a teacher in Australia modified it. A teacher in Australia used ViewSource, looked at the program, and changed it. This is a change he made. Now I'll explain what this is. In the original version of the physics program, all the objects had a uniform density. <clears throat> but in the real world, uniform density is the exception, not the rule. So he decided he wanted his students to experiment with objects with varying densities. So he added a mechanism to allow you to change the vary the density of the objects in physics. And so you can see, um, this is sort of before, this is after. See the triangle outweighs the square, even though the triangle is much smaller. And so when I when I talk about things like view source, again it, it sounds abstract, who would ever do it? Well, in fact, teachers are doing it. Teachers are taking advantage of this. And students are starting to take advantage of this. So the idea that um, we really design sugar to, to be locally appropriated, not just in terms of translation, but locally appropriated in terms of really taking this thing and being expressive with it, modifying it, making it your own, creating your own activities. So I, I think, again, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of Apple on their you know, there's an app for that. But I don't want to just consume Apple's apps. I want the children and the teachers to create their own activities, to create their own apps. That's where the real learning is going to happen. And that's where the real opportunity is. And that's why view source is so important, because view source sort of bootstraps the children and the teachers to let them begin to see under the hood how the tool works so they can own it themselves and do it themselves. It's starting to happen. It's a viral thing. It's happening more and more and more. And if you look at um, the, the, the rate of change, it, 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 it's really starting to, to uh, become an exponential process of, of growth around sugar activities and this kind of change. The, the slide before was a picture of a car crashing. It was an a, a automotive <coughs> crash dummy, and it was a test of a car uh, to see what, what happens to the car and the passenger when it hits something. The reason why I have that slide is because I've, I've learned a lot from the automotive industry that's relevant to software. And that is, when I was young, cars were heavy and made of steel. And when the car would hit a tree, the car would bounce off the tree, and nothing would happen to the car. It sounds great. But there's one problem. The problem is that the person in the car absorbs all the energy. So the car is okay, but the person's dead. Not good. So the automotive industry invented something called the crumple zone. 
And what the crumple zone did is it let the car absorb the, the impact and the person's okay. Well, with sugar, we have a crumple zone because we, learning involves risk taking. And if every time we try to change something and take a risk, the result is catastrophic failure, you'll very soon learn not to take risks. So instead, what we try to do with, with sugar is make the risk taking, the penalty for taking risks, very, very low so that the children will take more risks. So our goal is to make it easy to change, but the consequences of breaking things be inconsequential. And so we've got this idea of copy on write that we haven't fully implemented, but it, it, it's the idea that any change you make is actually a change to a copy, and it, it's easy to, uh, to, to recover. So I'm going to um, quickly wrap up with a, a, an announcement about what's new. Um, one thing that, that's new since I was last here is that there are over a million children using sugar around the world. Um, and another thing that, that's new, and this is really the, the, the gist of my announcement uh, today, um, we have a, a concept we call sugar on a stick. And what sugar on a stick is, is we put sugar onto a USB key. It's a live image. So you can plug this USB key into any computer, turn the computer on, and it's running sugar. And I want to use the, uh, the Network World Summit as an opportunity to announce something called Blueberry. Blueberry is um, the new version of Sugar on a Stick. It's um, just being released today. You guys are the first ones to find out about it. And it's um, so the, the, our, our, our latest and greatest. It includes um, the, the, the most recent version of Sugar, which is Sugar 0.86, that has lots of different improvements. It's using Fedora 12, although uh, Sugar runs in Mandriva as well, and, and uh, pretty much any other Linux, uh, new Linux distro. So we hope to uh, to have a, a Mandriva version. Um, it's got much improved navigation. It's got streamlined updates. Um, it's got better collaboration tools. Um, we support um, Flash through the, the free software Ganache. Um, got lots of new activities. Uh, and we've got uh, much easier customization of, of the stick. So we're really excited about this. Um, you can have an opportunity to, uh, during the break, to uh, play with sugar on a stick, blueberry, and, and, uh, and try it out. And just to, uh, to uh, again, quickly highlight some of the things, um, we have an uh, a activity portal now, much like the add-on site that comes with uh, uh, Mozilla Firefox. There's a sugar add-on site that's uh, got uh, hundreds of activities to download. Uh, when you download a new activity in Sugar, it's, one, it's a one mouse click to, uh, you, you click download now, and it's installed. That's all you have to do. It's, that, it's, we, we couldn't figure out a way to make it be less than one mouse click, but it, it's, it's no more than one mouse click. Um, we have um, lots of activities. This is uh, um, one of my favorites. This comes from uh, Bruno's uh, Gicompri, which is a, a French developer who's done some wonderful tools for children. These tools are all sugarized. They're all part of the sugar system. Uh, this is an ex a nice example, again, of this, this notion of being able to climb a mountain. This is uh, the first level of Sudoku in Gicompri, where you can see that instead of a 9 by 9 grid, it's just 3 by 3 Instead of numbers, it's just shapes, but you grow into the, the, the more complex one over time. This idea, again, of, of climbing mountains is, is fundamental to uh, in encouraging risk-taking. Um, another another uh, announcement, something brand new, and I don't know whether Eric's not here, but uh, this is another project happening here in France, but it's uh, called Open Office for Children, Open Office for Kids. An open office for kids has been sugarized, so it runs as part of sugar as well. So the whole open office suite, a version that's uh, actually probably good for adults as well because it gets rid of a lot of the bloat and the nonsense that open office suffers from along with uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, you know, two programs that are so 
overloaded, so heavy with features. It's you know, it, you, you know it's you spend all your energy navigating the features instead of spending your energy writing and thinking about what you actually want to accomplish. Well, this cut this cuts back, cuts off the fat, and it's back to the the essence. Uh, they did it for children, but I, I predict it's going to be much more popular for adults than uh, their, their normal product. <laughs> Um, this is um, uh, the eToys e program, which is one of our featured activities. eToys is, is a, a really rich environment, both for programming and multimedia authoring. Children are using it for writing books. These are some teachers in Toulouse who are learning uh, uh, eToys and uh, learning to uh, uh, begin to figure out how to apply some of these ideas to, to the classroom, apply it to uh, their curricular goals. I should point out, sugar is not a curriculum. Sugar is not telling the teachers what to teach. Sugar is a collection of tools that allow the teachers to further their goals. It doesn't tell the teachers their goals. It allows them to further whatever goals the teachers have. And uh, now I want to just wrap up by saying that this is our goal. That to, to lead a full life is to lead a life of learning. Learning is a lifetime event. It's not just what you do in school. And our goal with Sugar is to, again, give children the tools of learning. Our children are going to inherit a lot of problems. We're not going to solve the problems for them. Unfortunately, they're going to inherit a lot of problems from us. What can we give them? We can't give them the solutions but we can give them learning. And if we give them learning, we give them an opportunity to create the solutions themselves. So that's really, that's our goal. And I just want to make a final point about freedom. Because learning has to be free. I'll draw a line in the sand, and, and, and I, get, I got beat up for this uh, recently, but I'll say it again anyway. There are two places where unequivocally you need free software. One of them is voting machines, and the other is education. Because education is not just about receiving knowledge, it's about being expressive with that knowledge. And unless you have the freedom to be expressive, you, you, you won't learn. You might accumulate, but you won't learn. And I think it's also true that without education, we won't appreciate and protect our freedoms. And so I want to uh, just tell you, this is our, our URL, sugarlabs.org. And from there, you can download Blueberry. Blueberry is uh, waiting for you. And uh, that's my email, Walter at sugarlabs.org. And with that, uh, merci. So, Questions? Or? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, wait. So, you guys actually. It's working, sorry about that. Do uh, you have any questions for Walter over here? Could, could you tell us. Thanks. Could you tell us what, uh, what's becoming to the project One Laptop for Children? Because I think uh, the party in France was closed a few, few weeks or a few months ago. And uh, what is inside? Because I, I didn't have opportunity to, to, to test it. Sure. Um, so I was one of the founders of One Laptop Per Child, but I'm no longer with the project. I'm just doing the software. We spun sugar out. Um, but, but nonetheless, I can, we're still working with One Laptop Per Child, and all the One Laptop Per Child computers still run sugar. This is their actually a, a beta of their new machine. So the original machine had a geode processor in it. This has got a VIA processor in it. So it, it's um, a little bit uh, uh, speedier, than, and it's got more memory, more on, on, on board storage. It's got the same display, and, um, and it's got the, the um, almost newest version of sugar. We're working on getting the, the newest sugar on here. But this is actually 0.84, not 0.86. So they're the one generation of sugar behind. So they're coming out with this machine this fall. 
I think the price point is going to be about the same. It's still going to be a little, little less than $200. So I don't know what that translates to euros, but probably about 150 euros or so, maybe even a little bit less. And um, it's still you know, designed you know, to be sort of kid-proof. You know, so you can drop it. And I think it still works. We'll find out. Yeah, hey, it still works. Um, so you know, so they, so they're still making still making these. They're um, every child in Uruguay's got one. Um, there's uh, a, a major rule at it in lots of places. But again, you know, now that I'm at, at, at sugar. Um, I'm really, I'm not just interested in the children who have the opportunity to have that, I'm interested in every child. And so, you know, in, in some sense, you know, when I ask what's the, the netbook going to look like in the future, well, maybe the netbook looks like this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, want, I want to be able to go to any machine and, uh, and, and give them the same tools, the same experience. And there's a, there's a nice thing because with this, um, you know, netbooks are, 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 are great and netbooks are going to be everywhere someday, but they aren't everywhere today. But children are everywhere today. So I want to reach those children. I'm sort of impatient and I want to reach them soon, as soon as I can. So I want to be able to give them tools that they can use even now before they get the netbook. It'll be better when they have the netbook, but until they get the netbook, let them use Sugar on the old machine that barely runs Windows 2000. Well, Sugar runs great on those machines because we designed Sugar for a really small footprint machine, so it'll, it'll run and, and it's like having a new machine. So we we, we go and rehabilitate you know old, old computer labs at school, and by giving them a USB key. Suddenly, you know, the, the, in, in initial investment is much smaller. And, you know, if I didn't mention it, sugar is free. <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's Libra and it's also free as in beer. It's free. And uh, so the, the software doesn't cost them anything. Uh, actually, have, we have a, a website that we're working with called uh, RecycleUSB.com. And the idea there is to have people give old USB keys we put sugar on them and distribute them to the schools. So even the USB key could be free. Um, I don't know how much a, a two gig key costs in Europe these days. It's probably about five euros, maybe. Yeah, maybe less. Maybe less than that. Um, sugar will run on a one gig key. So it doesn't need a lot. And all your data is stored on here. So it, it, everything's here. The whole experience is here. Um, so I think it's an opportunity to not just enhance this computer, but to enhance the experience on, on all computers. Any other questions? Another question is, uh, I have met uh, Nicolas Neuburport uh, years ago in UNESCO when he was presenting the screen for the ebook. And in that institution, in UNESCO, you know, that organization had a partnership with Microsoft. What you, uh, as a how could I say that? An open system uh, worker uh, with sugar. What do you do with organizations like UNESCO uh, in terms? In well, the, yeah. In, in, yeah. Well, I mean, here here's an example. Um, the UN has a program called uh, I think 2010 or something like I don't know something like 2020 or something. They're going to be distributing. Uh, 500,000 used computers out to the developing world. And I've been trying to convince them that sugar might be a good choice for those machines. But so far, I, 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 I can't get them to be interested because, because well, it's free. Well, but probably because it's free, probably because it makes sense, and probably because I, I don't take them to nice lunches like some people do. Um, <laughs> But the, um, but nonetheless, I mean, anybody, if you can, if you know some of these people and convince them that uh, maybe there's some opportunity here, uh, that would be great. I've had some conversations with UNESCO, and, and actually, the program that I was really fascinated with with UNESCO is they have a program um, where they 
provide faculty chairs at universities all around the world, at least two in every country. And the goal behind that is to sort of promote some local cultural. And I, I think that if, if we could get sugar into the hands of each of the UNESCO faculty chairs so that they could use it as a way of promoting this local cultural phenomena in their schools, that would be a really nice point of leverage. So that's a program I've been pursuing, but it's been sort of a long, slow process. Any other questions? Or I'm around for coffee during the break as well. So, uh, yeah. I have a, a strange question, which is the following. Some of the better computer scientists that I know, in fact, uh, they learned very uh, when they were very old computing and uh, software and all these things. You don't think that uh, learning uh, Latin, mathematics, physics, it's better than uh, studying computers to, to really be efficient with computers? Well, you know, my, my friend Marvin Minsky once said, uh, anything that calls itself a science isn't. And, uh, so he was sort of making a, a, a dig at computer science, that maybe computer science isn't a science at all. Um, it's a technology. It's, it's a technology. And uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I think that one of the great gifts we can give children is to give them access to science. So I'm, I'm very much about science, but I think that computation and the, the, some of the thinking around computation, the logic, and the, um, but also, I, I skipped over a slide, the process of problem solving that you engage in in computer science, that's the thing I'm interested in. I'm not interested in algorithms, I'm interested in problem solving. And the computer is a great place to do problem solving in a risk-free environment. So back to this, this notion of risk-free. I can get into all different types of things, make a mess, experiment, try things, beat my head against the wall, and nothing will break. So I, I think that it, 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 it's a real opportunity. With One of the things we did with this computer is we, we built the, the microphone port in this computer lets you plug in sensor data. So you know, those kids were, on that slide I showed at the beginning, the kids in Thailand out in the woods with, with their computers were measuring data. They were doing science with the computer. But they can take those data, bring them right into Turtle Art, and start to program with their data, and, and learn to compare and contrast and, and the like. So the idea of using this as an entree into real science, yeah, that's exactly the goal. The, you know, the things that are important are science, literacy, but I, I think that computation is a great on-ramp to those things. Any other questions? Uh, well, I might have one. I'm not sure if this microphone is working yeah. here. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, lo uh, the turtle application that you've been showing us, it kind of reminds me of Logo from the early 80s. It's something like this. It is Logo. There you go. So you know, time repeats itself. Uh, another question is, um, uh, what we see over here, Walter, are mainly all these educational networks that are available on the market, starting from the old PC XL uh, with the Dell Attitude 2100 and the Interclassman PC. Are any future plans of cooperating with these manufacturers? Um, yeah, no, we're, we're in ongoing discussions with all these guys. Um, you know, certainly with, with Dell and Intel as, as two, two examples, and, and thinking about not just how we optimize the sugar experience on these existing machines, but also conversations about what other form factors might be useful for education. One of the things that, you know, sugar in some sense represents a, a, a breakthrough, not in the sense that sugar itself is a breakthrough, the breakthrough is more of a conceptual, a meta breakthrough in the sense that here's a, a, a small group of people, because a sugar team from the very beginning was just a small group of people, and we did something very different. Now, you can like it or not like it, but it's different. And if we could do it, you can do it too. So what's happened is the floodgates open. So the, what, what, before sugar, and, and this is a little bit of hyperbole, but before sugar, 
um, what you would do is you would take your problem and map it onto Windows. After Sugar, you take your problem and you design a solution for your problem. And so the idea that we can begin to design custom hardware and software using these pieces to suit the problem as opposed to take the problem to Redmond is, is that's the breakthrough. And that's part of the opportunity that these open systems uh, afford. You can't do that unless you do it in an open world. Because the tool chain for open free software is better. Turns out that it's a better way of working. It's a much more efficient way of working. It's a much more powerful way of working. And it's the only way to really do these kinds of things. So, um, but it's, it's also your great opportunity. It's there. Carpe diem. <laughs>